Hello and good morning. And uh, man, the astronomical events lately have been coming fast and furious. I'm once again joined by Sean Dahl from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Good morning, Sean. Hey, good morning, Terry. Glad to be here. Thanks again. Good to see you again. And before we start uh, talking about the comet, I just got to uh, mention you were, you were with us last Thursday to talk about the Aurora, and that did not disappoint. I uh, appreciate you coming on and alerting the folks. And man, we received hundreds upon hundreds of pictures. That had to have been one of the best Aurora events uh, in, in recent years, of course, maybe matching that of uh, way back in May. Yeah, that's right, Terry. It was spectacular once again. Everything lined up. Things you and I were discussing throughout the day about the solar wind and how it interacts that maybe eventually the audience will learn more about. Uh, all panned out. It was all favorable, and the aurora lit up the sky once again and really uh, lived up to expectations for something of that level. Yeah, just magnificent. Um, so on to the next. Uh, we now have Comet Atlas, or uh, I don't want to... Atlas, I guess, would be the, the short name. I don't know if you do you, you want to give an, uh, an effort with the long version of the comet name? Uh, no, I don't, Terry. It's <laughs> I don't <common>. either. <laughs> but it's, it's something in the order of Comet C slash 2023, and then one of the discoverers, Tusha Shinshan, something along that order, and then that <laughs> Atlas. So, yeah, we'll refer to it as Comet Atlas for, for easiness. So it, it's. Um, uh, I, I, we're putting up a picture now of you and your wife, actually. You, you went up to Wyoming. This was from last night and um, got a great picture of the comet. So it has, it has been uh, visible in the evening sky for the last several days, but here it's been kind of cloudy. But maybe you could just talk a bit about um, it, the comet in general, uh, its path through our solar system, and why now is the best time to view it. Sure, Terry. So, yeah, that picture is of my wife and I uh, looking at the comet gleefully because it is very spectacular. We had to drive up to Wyoming to, you know, part of my business, I've been a meteorology uh, meteorology work for so long before I went to space weather. I kind of forecasted where the cloud coverage would be free. So we drove 60 miles into Wyoming and I took some spectacular pictures with my camera gear. Yet to develop those, those aren't available yet for your show. But, yeah, you can clearly see the comet in this uh, cell phone image. I mean, this is how easy it is to see it. It's been on a long journey, this comet. It came from the outer reaches of our solar system, something in the order of one to two light years away, and it won't come again for like 80,000 years or so. It's a very long period comet. So what an opportunity. Like you said, we had a total solar eclipse, comet, maybe another comet later as well, but this one is the focus right now. Space weather, it's all lining up for a spectacular year. It sure is, uh, and we're showing a couple pictures taken from our viewers already uh, over the Cape. Uh, this one was from Megan, uh, just a spectacular shot. Um, maybe just a, a, some stats, like how, just for folks that are, that are curious, how big is this comet? Um, how big is the head and, and the tail is, is really the, the amazing part. I, I heard it was several million miles long. Oh, the tail is huge. It's, it's created by the solar wind and the interaction from the sun. So once again, space weather is involved here, right? And that's really the main tail, what's called the dust tail. You can clearly see that in my quick, fast cell phone picture. The comet had the nucleus. I don't know exactly how large that is, but the breadth of the coma that it creates, that kind of leading edge of brightness around that core nucleus of the comet is very bright. We could make it out last night. First, we saw Venus. That's a star. A great way to find this comet, by the way, everybody, is look for Venus, this brightest star-like thing you're going to see in the evening sky down low in the horizon, and another bright star up above and to its right called Arcturus. Right in the middle of there is where that comet is right now, so you just have to be patient. And eventually, it's at a magnitude that's going to be visible with your naked eye pretty soon after darkness, and then watch that tail. It spreads something in the order of 10 degrees or more across the sky, the sky being zero to 90 degrees overhead. That's massive. My 50 millimeter lens got the comet head and the tail, but that's it. I was right framed just right with a 50 millimeter lens. So an enormous spectacular object out there that people should relish the opportunity to see something so rare to be seen. Yeah, I know I'm going to head out tonight and take a look. Again, we've been clouded over here for the last couple of nights, so tonight is really our first shot. But if folks can't see it tonight, because there could be just a few leftover clouds, uh, there are a few opportunities. Really, the rest of this week, um, the weather here is fantastic, so we will be able to see it uh, for several more days to come, correct? And w but it will be fading in magnitude as the days wear on? That's right, Terry. It's, it's kind of going backwards now, right? It's made its journey around the sun. It's now going back into outer space. So the tail is actually pointing away from the sun. 
uh, because it's moving backwards, uh, because of that interaction with the solar wind. It's also developed an anti-tail. I could clearly see that last night. It's obvious in my images uh, that it points, that tail kind of points in the direction of the sun, but it's really an optical illusion because what that tail is, is that it's just a change in the perspective from Earth where we're kind of in the same orbital plane as the comet right now. And it's an illusion, really. It's still pointing away from the sun overall, but it looks like it's pointing directly at the sun as a small, thin line uh, headed out in front of the comet. So it's a great opportunity to watch the evolution. It, it really became visible in the evening sky on around October 12th, so not long ago at all. I did try the previous uh, week and a half ago in the early morning because it was visible then, but I just could not see it. The sky was too bright, but the evening is proving to be great because it's far enough away from the sun now that it gets dark enough where you can easily see it as it uh, moves towards the horizon as the overnight uh, continues. And we could expect it to be a little bit higher uh, above the horizon each night this week, I believe, correct? That's exactly right, Jay. And yes, you're right, it'll get dimmer, but we can watch the evolution change. As the higher it gets in the sky, the darker that sky is going to be. It won't be so close to those twilight uh, you know, brightness. So it'll become even visible. At some point, people will be able to image it in their telescopes. But not right now. It's just so massive. You really need smaller lenses of your cell phone to capture the beauty of the entire comet. And talk to me about, so we have a full supermoon coming up Thursday. Um, obviously, that'll be bright, you know, lightening up the evening sky. Now, will that, how much do you figure that'll impact, you know, when we were talking about the aurora, uh, best to have the darkest sky possible. Um, do you anticipate, so for Thursday night, Friday night, this, it rises about, the, about sunset. So how much do you anticipate that will, you know, sort of impact the brightness or the viewing of the comet? I don't think it will much, Terry, because that comet's pretty bright. Um, and also, it's totally opposite of where the moon is. The moon is very low in the sky right now. Yes, it'll be a full moon, uh, one of those super moons that's closer to Earth. Uh, that's why they're called super moons when they happen. But I don't think it's going to interfere too much because one's looking almost totally away. Uh, the moon will be on the opposite horizon as the comet. So people should be great to go and not worry about the moon. What an what what a fantastic couple of nights though you have on you look one way you see the, a, a super moon which is going to be the brightest uh, of the year uh, and on the other side you've got a comet um, and this is just a, not less than a week away from folks seeing an aurora borealis I mean is, is this not one of the best times uh, in, in astronomy in recent years that you can remember Oh yes I don't remember a year like this and I've been an amateur backyard astronomer for decades. Uh, I have a fleet of telescopes in my house. I love that hobby. So my day job takes me to the sun. My night hobby takes me into the reaches of outer space. It's pretty cool. And everything lining up like this, it's just so fantastic because it really draws awareness to the beauty of outer space and our interactions with elements in our solar system, but also to space weather and how important it actually is. So it's really lining up to be a fantastic year and it is drawing a lot of attention and it's getting people so much more understanding of the important topic of space weather along with the beauty that it can provide. Agreed. Uh, and just to review, um, you know, just uh, some last minute viewing tips if you had any last minute thoughts for tonight or the next several nights. Again, the weather here looks great. Um, really just need a clear view uh, to the west, right? And um, uh, would you recommend bringing along some binoculars? I mean, you should be able to see it with the naked eye, but maybe binoculars uh, just for a better view. Right, Terry, that, that's all very good advice all the way around. Uh, binoculars may help you spot it before your eyes see it because usually binoculars have a, a larger aperture and they're bringing in more light. So that's a great way to start looking for it. Remember, find Venus and people should look up where Arcturus, the star Arcturus is in the sky. Look right in between there and don't lose your patience. It needs to get a little darker. I didn't spot it till after, or right around seven o'clock uh, local time last evening, where we finally began to see it. And then we had to wait for another almost 30 minutes for it to get dark enough. But I started snapping pictures by 15 minutes after seven and went all the way till eight o'clock. By then it got really low and much dimmer, believe it or not. And I think the reason it got dimmer is you're looking through so much atmosphere at that point through the entire horizon. And that's probably why it got a little dimmer. So that golden opportunity, at least for us on mountain time, should be no different for Eastern time, is kind of that seven o'clock to eight o'clock hour, and especially that last 30 minutes. Well, Sean, I cannot wait. And I just, as a reminder for our viewers here at WBZ, we'd love to see your pictures. You've been great with the Aurora stuff. You can send them in at uh, weather at WBZTV.com. 
Uh, Sean, thanks again for joining us. Who knows what's next this year? Is there anything on your calendar? Obviously, there'll probably be another shot at an aurora coming. I saw that there was a weak geomagnetic storm recently, but uh, and anything on your calendar or, or list for the next couple of weeks, couple of months? Uh, not really, Terry. Things are looking kind of normal right now, but yeah, you're right. I mean, we still got all of this year, all of next year, and even in 2026 where we're gonna be in that solar maximum. So the sun's gonna to continue to do its stuff. Our forecasters this morning have been analyzing several of those blasts of energy from the sun. They're just going away from Earth in different directions, the sun being a sphere, of course. So yeah, we're still gonna get hit by more of these. We'll see if we get to that level that we got uh, going into last weekend. But yes, it's still gonna be a highlight for the next year or two. And what a spectacular opportunity to enjoy the Aurora and the other beauty that space is providing right now with that comet. All right, Sean, thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you brought us luck with the Aurora last week. Hopefully all our viewers get a chance to see the comet tonight or in the next couple of nights. Uh, thanks again, Sean, from the Space Weather Prediction Center and to all of you all folks at WBZ. Happy viewing and send us in those pics. We'd love to see and share them.